Uh, thank you all for having me. It's an honor. I haven't been here before, so it's uh, it's uh, nice to see you. I'm glad it's a very informal setting. Um, Basia mentioned the process. There actually isn't a big process. Uh, putting programming on the air on WNYC or any radio station uh, involves a, it's a kind of balancing act. You there there are you start with a couple of things. One, what do you have on the air already, and how well is it working? You think, well, how much real estate of the week does that take up? So if you look, for instance, at the Brian Lehrer Show or the Leonard Lopate Show, Morning Edition, Jonathan Schwartz, there are shows that are on the air that take up many hours of the week that we would never in a million years want to say goodbye to. And so that's sort of your, that's fixed real estate. You don't have to worry about that. It performs very well. Uh, it, it raises funds, it attracts all kinds of listeners, uh, they're dynamic, they're constantly evolving, those kinds of things are, are always really good. Um, then you have to look at the national shows. There are certain things that you expect a public radio to have in the United States. Now, that everybody's list is a little different. I've worked at WITF in Harrisburg, at Minnesota Public Radio, at Wisconsin Public Radio, at WBUR in Boston, and now here. And, and I've, wherever I go, I listen to public radio to see what people are doing. That's a primary research tool for me. Every place has a slightly different version of the A-list, things that they carry. Um, for us, it's clearly Morning Edition is one. All Things Considered is another. Weekend Edition Saturday with Scott Simon would be one. Fresh Air is, is in that category of shows. You just don't hear a public radio station without those kinds of marquee programs. So then you, so that you have all of that. And then you think, well, what do we want to do uh, for our local community? What are the shows that best reflect the place we're in? And here in New York is a little different than most of the other stations that uh, I've listened to around the country. Um, not so different from WBUR in Boston, which has a similar mission. That is to really concentrate as many resources as we can on the local community. And that involves from morning drive, from the first moment you turn your radio on, when you wake up in the morning, through the middle of the day with Brian and Leonard and Soundcheck, uh, through the evening programming when we may need to do election coverage and primary results and things like that. Um, how do we staff and fill those hours to, ma to the maximum uh, benefit of our audience in their curiosity and need to know about what's going on in New York City? And that covers all kinds of things, not just politics, it's culture. Um, it's music. It's uh, uh, urban ur urban development. What hap what's happening to the streets? Why are bike lanes being put in your in your neighborhood? Uh, suddenly one day, part of the street is painted green. Who did that and why? Um, so that's another element that has to come into play. How much localism can you afford to do? What is the audience really interested in uh, in the for the long term development? Then you come down to crazy questions like, well, how much money do you have? Uh, kind of important. Um, every year, we have to negotiate first with PRI and with NPR and with APM, the national programming providers, a set of fees. Every year, they throw some pretty big numbers at us, and we have to go back and say, well, those are awfully big. What about these numbers over here? And then it goes back and forth for many months. Um, within those kinds of categories, you get to talk with them about, well, how much are we going to pay for fresh air this year? So there's another round of negotiations about each of the things we purchase from the networks. And they have an agenda. They want certain shows on the air, so they give us a discount. They don't care about some other things, and so they don't give us a discount. And all that little, there's a sort of jockeying that goes on so that we end up with most of what we want, and they end up with most of what they want. Uh, if that's the ideal result, I would say. It's never perfect, but that's, that's the ideal result. And then there's another category of things. Um, what would we like to try to do if we do have the money to do it. What do we see a need that needs to be filled? Uh, what do we think would be distinctively New York? Uh, what do we think uh, might have a future that we can only barely imagine? And I think Radio Lab would be a good example of, of this category of show. Uh, when it started, it was JAD hosting pieces of sort of found radio from around the country, Sunday nights from midnight to two or three o'clock in the morning sort of him doing it himself in a room in our tower at one Center Street. Uh, nothing at all really like what that show is right now. But um, somebody, Dean Capello, I would say, my boss, and Michael Elsesser, my predecessor, 
looked at JAD, looked at the landscape of public media and what was changing about it, the rise of independent producers, people able to make all this stuff at home on their computer. And they said, well, there's probably more of this stuff coming, and it's coming in not hour-long bits. It's coming in eight minutes or 12 minutes or 17 minutes. What do we do with it? Well, you know, we have the unique, I would call it almost a blessing, the, 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 the luck to be in New York where... There are a lot of people who make things where you have a lot of creative people and you can you have an audience that <coughs> can withstand a little change. They're not the city is changing around them every day. They're used to it. So if we try something new, our audience isn't going to flee. Or uh, they're going to give us the benefit of the doubt that if we don't like it and they don't like it, it will eventually go away and something better will take its place and that the role of um, a leading uh media provider in the number one market in the country is to take some risk uh, in order to live up to our promise to the audience. So those the, the, those are all the things I'm starting to think of. Then you then the the last thing that comes into it, but it's not it's not the least important, but it's the part that I play a greater role in probably is what and this is a very it's the thing you it's really hard to quantify what sounds good next to what. That's a big part of my job last year in October when we acquired WQXR, uh, I had had in my back pocket a schedule change that I developed for the weekends and for the nights. And well, the what if we had music all on one station, which was a long-term station goal in any case. It was probably not a bad idea to have this plan. Um, what could we do to improve the performance of the station, include some new shows, and generally make everything run a little bit better in terms of satisfying the audience and growing the station. And um, last fall, we had that opportunity to do that. Evening Music moved to WQXR. Um, it's kind of my philosophy that it's better to make a change all at once rather than dribble it out hour by hour over many, many months. But you, it's, it's the pull the Band-Aid philosophy of programming. Um, and so, uh, and I, there were things that I just didn't like. I'll give you one example. Uh, after Prairie Home Companion on AMA 20 on Sundays, we had Marketplace Money, I think. And then maybe either, either Tavis Smiley or Selected Shorts, I can't remember. But it was a series of shows which shared almost no audience. <clears throat> and if you were sitting there trying to listen, you'd like one thing and then turn it off. Wait for the thing you like, turn it off. Like that's the kind of behavior you do not want to have your audience do. You want them it you want to gradually move through the day having an experience that you really enjoy, and then the next experience you maybe are not as familiar with, but it's not so unfamiliar that you're not willing to give it a try. That's the sort of the psychology of radio programming. So uh, I moved in in the fall when we had this chance to shake things up, I put selected shorts on after Garrison. And I went back last June, maybe, to look at how that show had performed in that hour. That's 1 to 2 o'clock on Sunday afternoon. That, the time, that time slot had grown by 700%. And which, you know, that's not like a genius thing on my part. It's just sitting there thinking, well, who has just listened to Garrison tell his monologue? Who likes storytelling? What would you put next to a show with a story at the end of it? Selected shorts. Um, so that's the whole rocket science of how uh, the station really gets programmed ideally.